Hey folks, and welcome back to another adventure in the garage. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Luke, and I'm here to help you sort out all of the settings and measurements on your new Kiwitz HT118 Alpha. This video isn't sponsored or anything, but I do have a discount deal worked out with Kiwitz, so go ahead and check the description down below where you can get a discount from their website. But I bought this meter on my own accord, and they didn't ask me to make this video, so this is all us, and let's uh, go ahead and get started. Initial impressions, I like it. It's kind of beefy. One of the features that I'm most excited about that I think should be standard on all meters is whatever setting that you've selected, you can see that the ports down here get illuminated, and they're letting you know which port leads you should use for that setting, which I think is just awesome. I think that should be standard on every meter. So I really like that they're doing that. Something that they have labeled all over this meter that they seem to be very excited about it is their Hertz display on basically every setting that they can get it on. And that seems to be common with this company is they're working out kind of a two display kind of setup here where you can have Hertz and your measurement at the same time. So that's kind of an interesting feature that I've seen on some of their other stuff. Can take some getting used to, but that HZ is just Hertz or think about frequency. We have our function button that'll let us go ahead and cycle through. And then here on the left-hand side, it'll let us know AC, DC, or here on our you know resistance continuity diode, we can hit the function button defaults to resistance and then we can cycle through. Now it's continuity and then it's diode. That's what that button's for. And then we have a lit back screen. And from what I can tell this, this backlight doesn't time out like a lot of other meters do, which I really, really like. And then if you hold this down, there is a flashlight on the back, which is nice. Even though it's a desktop meter kind of setup, they still have a flashlight for you, which I do really enjoy. Let's keep this, this screen backlit for the rest of the video. We're just gonna go ahead and start off here. What, what does this mean? What is this first setting? Well, here we have Hertz. So that's one of the functions that we can select as we go through. We can see AC and Hertz up there as we cycle through the two different functions of this one setting. It is an auto ranging meter, which is also a very nice function. And yeah, and this setting is gonna be your run of a mill taking DC voltage measurements, like such as like a battery. You can just go ahead red to plus and black to minus cause it's DC voltage. And we got just over 1.5 volts there. That's great. And then we can go ahead and hit our function, that'll take us to AC measurements, which is like the power that comes out of your wall. We've got a little AC power source here that we can take a measurement with. Now it's not gonna matter which way for AC that you use your leads. You can use red on hot or red on neutral. I always like to just use best practice and use keep red on hot. So this is great. We have not only our voltage display for our AC measurement, but also our frequency as well. So we're showing that my alternating current source is at 60 Hertz and it's at 12 volts. So that's pretty nice that they do that when you get into more advanced stuff with motors and stuff like that, or variable frequency types of stuff that can be really handy. Next setting up the M, the lowercase M as in mic is for millivolt. I don't have any good millivolt AC sources, but I do have a millivolt DC source for you. We could just use these leads. Let me output like, we'll do like 50 millivolts. See what that comes back with. So we're in our millivolt setting for DC. And let's see, it should have reminded us what port leads. Yeah, it blinks like that. So your black one will always be in calm. It's your red lead that's gonna hop around and they have that labeled red for you as a good reminder. Have that lit up, that is a nice big bright display, which is really nice. Okay, it's saying 33 millivolts, and I'm outputting 50. Next we have our dedicated Hertz and duty cycle function, which Hertz and duty cycle are two different measurements. This little meter outputs a square wave. There was a note in here that I did read for this setting, no more than 10 volts AC or DC. And so what we can do is take a measurement. So what this is saying is it's saying, okay, it's reading 47 Hertz. So now Hertz is on the bottom. 
And then this percentage sign is duty cycle. What we're reading is like a square wave pulse and the power is turning on and off. And frequency is how many times per second it turns off. And then duty cycle is the amount of time that that power source is on versus off. So if it's at 50% duty cycle, it's 50% on, 50% off, and then it's saying 47. So it's turning on and off 47 times per second. So hope that makes sense for you. Okay, now on to something a little bit more exciting. We have our ohms continuity and diode setting. It's gonna default to ohms to resistance. We've got some resistors here. Now I just use resistors in my videos to try to make it simple for everybody but you can read resistance on basically anything that has an electrical load. So I'm reading different resistive values here and we can see too it's auto ranging. So it's saying, so it's saying K ohms. So that means this is 1000 ohms. Okay, so the, the unit has changes for you. And like here we'll get a capital M that stands for mega. So think of mega as million. So we have one mega ohm, that's one million ohms. I've been doing a lot of meter videos lately that are all manual ranging and trying to explain all of that. So to be able to have a auto ranging meter is nice. Even though I'm using resistors, it doesn't have to be resistors. It could be like this little motor here. This, this motor will have resistance to it. Probably a couple ohms, about one ohm it's coming back with. And even last, 0.6, okay. But any kind of electrical load is gonna have some kind of resistance and or impedance. Let's cycle through. Next, we should have continuity that's gonna be that little speaker tone up there in the corner. And what that's just saying is basically, we wanna make sure that a, a wire isn't completely cut in half. The meter will emit a tone and then look at that, it's got that nice bright green light up there at the top for you to let you know there's continuity. And then there'll be like a threshold, right? As long as the resistance of the wire is under a certain threshold, it'll emit a tone. Probably one of the most important settings on your on your meter, honestly, it's gonna be voltage and continuity. This is what you're gonna be using 99% of the time. But there's plenty of other functions, which are great. And it's also just gonna depend on the type of stuff that you're trying to measure with this. And then next we're gonna have diodes. It's that little symbol there. So I've got two examples of diodes and you're always gonna measure your diodes in two directions. And what we're gonna be looking for when we measure a diode is voltage drop. That's saying that there's about 580 millivolts of voltage drop across this diode, which means that this diode is good. Um, generally, we wanna see between 500 and 800 millivolts of voltage drop across our diode in one direction. And then we should have an OL in the other direction. And that's gonna tell us that this diode is good, so that's a little bit on how to do that. I always like to put the meters through the ringer with testing an LED, a light emitting diode. And now we can see that's the forward voltage of this diode. So this is telling me, okay, this LED needs 2.6 volts to light up. And when the meters, it's like 50% of the time they can do this. So when they can, I always get really excited. Sometimes the meter can't output enough voltage like there's specifically, I use the white LEDs because they require the most voltage to turn on. Um, and so sometimes the meter is not able to output enough voltage to turn on a white LED. So I always think it's impressive when it can. But there's that. Next is gonna be our capacitance setting. Auto ranging as well. We can take a little capacitor. Always make sure to discharge your capacitors before hooking them up to your meter or you could damage something. Um, let's see and black lead will go to the negative side. And then this will usually take a second because it's gonna charge up the capacitor before it gives us back a value. Okay, 644, 49 microfarads. And then for that hold button, something that we can do, Press that hold button now, it holds the value for us. Don't forget to discharge your capacitor because we just charge it up, right, to measure it. And then we could take a look here on the capacitor and see where's that. Okay, this capacitor is rated for 680 microfarads. And they're, I think they're usually rated between, uh, for plus or minus 10%. So that's, that's the way that you go ahead and do that. Next we have our thermal couple setting. 
So that's what these fancy leads are for that came in your little packet, different set of leads. And there's a very specific reason why we have a different set of leads, but we can go ahead and go to that. It's gonna let us know, okay, red on this top one, black in the bottom one. And the nice thing about these dual displays that they've been doing is it's gonna output it in Celsius and Fahrenheit for us at the same time. We don't have to cycle back and forth if we're doing a report or we're trying to communicate it to someone else, we just know, okay, it's at 19C or 66F. And then I always like to put my finger on here and make sure that they're working before I do any measurements, make sure that it's it's changing in temperature and it is so great because sometimes these test leads, they can go bad and you always want to be very careful when removing this style. This funky U here, this is micro micro amps and frequency can also be displayed. If we're doing AC micro amps, which is pretty crazy, we'll just be sticking to DC micro amps. Again, it's reminding us what ports to use, which I love. That's such a great training tool. Even if you're not learned like brand new, it's still just a great reminder when you change your settings to have a big green light flashing at you. Hey, what are you doing? I'm gonna use these, these resistors as little loads. And for micro amps, let's see, on the meter it says on this, on these ports we can do up to 600 milliamps and it is fused. So we should be good. I'll just do one and I'll even limit on my power supply. Microamps is gonna be crazy small, but I love when a meter has a microamp. It's so rare that you'll get a meter that has a microamp measurement setting. We can go ahead and I'll put this. Now your amperage measurements will be made in series as opposed to parallel. So basically what that means is we're gonna use the meter as a jumper wire to complete the circuit. So what we have here is 1200 microamps, or that would be one milliamp. So that's a very small measurement. Very cool that it's capable of doing that. And then to have microamps and milliamps, it's letting us know we can stay on this setting. And now our unit of measurement has changed. So we can do the same one that we just did. So we can see, okay, 1.2 milliamps. Then we can go on to the next one. Okay, 12 milliamps. And then there's amperage. And again, on these, you can hit the function and go to an AC milliamp or an AC microamp setting with your Hertz displayed, very, as I would say, cash money. Next on an amperage setting, it's letting us know, move this test lead to the 10 amp port. Now I can put my output out to pretty much whatever I want. Let's go ahead and see what this comes back as. So that's showing 120 milliamps. Now that's not very exciting. Let's go ahead and set up some things that are a little bit more exciting to measure to give us a better visual of what I mean by series and completing the circuit. Because if you're if you're just starting out with that stuff, this stuff that can be a little bit confusing. But we'll use this motor and this light bulb in our in our example. So you can see kind of what that would look like. These are gonna share a common and then they'll have their own power port. And then I can just hook this black lead here to the commons. And then my red lead, I'm not gonna hook up directly to any of them. I'm just gonna have it off here to the side. And if this terminal block doesn't make a lot of sense to you, it's just straight across. So this red power will power that terminal, which goes to nothing. This terminal goes to that one, which is the power side, com feeds com, so on and so forth. So what I can do is I can take my meter put one lead on the power side, and then I can apply power to a load, and then I can measure it. Wow, look at the way it lights up. That's super cool, it's got that amber light up on there. I love that, these guys are so awesome. And then it switches to blue, great, wow. God, that's so cool, okay, and then let's check out the motor. Wow, okay, so even, let's see, if I don't have the backlight on and I do that, that's a nice little detail. I really, really like that. And then we can see our motor. That's just great. I love little little details like that. Okay, so non-contact voltage and live. This is also a, becoming a lot more common, especially on the K Weeds brand, but just for any of them. 
coming down the line. So this is our non-contact voltage. So let's get a, a voltage going on here, a hot. And this should let us know if something's hot, right? This is basically the equivalent of a hot stick. You probably recognize one of these. Same thing, but it's built into the meter. That's what this little antenna is here for. But you know it's hot. And then the H and L should be for high and for low voltage. I'm not the biggest fan of non-contact voltage indicating. I mean, some people are, some people aren't. I was always trained to not be, but what I do like is they have the live function and they let you know, hey, put one lead you don't need the black lead or anything. You just need one lead in this port. And then you can actually make contact and it'll tell you if it's live. I like that a lot better just because it's a lot more accurate letting you know exactly what is hot and what is not. So I think that's a great feature. And then Minimax is just a store. Just go over that really quick. Let you know the highest value that it achieved while you were measuring. And then let's see our low. Okay, so it's either one or the other. It doesn't display both, but it holds it, retains it. That's nice. And then again, we get that amber. I wonder what the threshold is for the amber light. Let's see. So it looks about 80 volts is when it's gonna light up amber like that as a warning. And amber looks like it's the only color it's gonna, yeah, it looks like right at that 80 volt setting. Very cool. Well, anyways, those are all the settings on your K Wheats. If you found this video helpful, give me a thumbs up. And if not, give me a thumbs down. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know in the comment section. And if you made it this far in the video, go ahead, give me a like, if subscribe, ring the bell, do your thing. And check out the link down below in the description for exclusive deals, discounts, all that good stuff. And I will catch you all on the next one.